What's up guys? Uh, today we're going to build Alexa with the Raspberry Pi. And essentially what it is, is like Google Now or Siri where you ask it a question and it'll return with an answer. So it's voice uh, communication. For example, Alexa, what is the weather today? Currently, in Santa Clara, it's 63 degrees with partly sunny skies. Today, you can expect intermittent clouds with a high of 68 and a low of 46. Alexa, tell me a joke. Why is the mushroom always invited to parties? Because he's a fun guy. We will be uh, simulating the voice functionality of Alexa with the Raspberry Pi. Just to give a breakdown of the things that we'll be needing, we will be needing a USB mouse keyboard, as well as HDMI monitor. Um, we will be needing speakers, as well as a USB microphone. And of course, a Raspberry Pi, model two or three, either one works. Um, in addition, you'll be needing to make an Amazon developer account along the way, which is free, so that's not something you'll need to worry about. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Cool, so now that we have the micro SD card in hand. Here is what it looks like. There we go. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and slide it into the SD card adapter that they gave here and then go ahead and plug it into our laptop so we can format it and install noobs. So let's go ahead and slide that right in there. And then we should see it come up soon. Oh, here it is. And so from there, let's go ahead and uh, install noobs. Now we have the micro SD card, which is this. It's empty, it has no name. Uh, let's see. It has 32.02 gigabytes on it, which is cool. Anyway, so the first thing we need to do is open disk utility and format it into an FAT disk. So this is currently the uh, micro SD that we have inside. So we'll go ahead and erase it. We'll name it Raspberry Pi. And we want it uh, FAT, which is also known as MS-DOS. So go ahead and click that, hit erase, and it'll go ahead and do whatever it needs to do. When it's done, we'll go ahead and take a look at it in Finder and confirm that now the name is Raspberry Pi and we'll confirm that it is an FAT disk, which it is FAT32. So now what we have to do is install noobs. So let's go ahead and do that. So now once we have the disk set up, we can go ahead and download and load noobs onto the disk. So all we want to do is go ahead and go to raspberrypi.org slash downloads slash noobs. And once we go there, it'll give us a place to download noobs. Go ahead and hit download zip. And it'll go ahead and download. So we'll go ahead and come back once it's ready. Okay, so now that Noobs has downloaded, we can go ahead and open the decompressed file. And this is all of its contents. So we can just go ahead and copy all of this and move it onto the micro SD card we have. So let's go ahead and let that load. And once it's done transferring all the files, then we can just take out the micro SD card and go ahead and start working on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now I just moved to the floor just because there's more space. As you can see there, that is a monitor that we will be using. Uh, there's our Raspberry Pi with the HDMI cable, our mouse, our keyboard, and in the corner, you can't really see it, but there is our uh, power supply for the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and start plugging these things in. The first thing that we need to plug in is the HDMI cable, so let me go ahead and do that. I can go ahead and power the Raspberry Pi, and it will it should show up on the monitor that we have. 
So this is where we are going to go ahead and begin setting up the Pi and installing the software. Cool, so now once we have the Raspberry Pi on the monitor, we can go ahead and start installing software. The first thing we need to install is Raspbian. So we can go ahead and select that and hit install. So will just ask, are you sure? You can hit yes. And so this might take a while, so uh, I'll come back once it is finished. Cool, so we are back now and Raspbian has finally been installed completely on the Raspberry Pi. Cool, so we have reached the desktop of the Raspberry Pi. So in this corner are all the apps, the waste bin. And so the first thing that we're going to open is terminal. And now what we need to do is connect to Wi-Fi. Because this is a Raspberry Pi 3, it does have Wi-Fi capability. Uh, if you're connected on a Raspberry Pi 2, then you can use Ethernet or a wireless adapter. But because we are on a 3, we will be using the Wi-Fi capability. So the first thing we need to do to scan all the networks is hit sudo iwlist wlan0 scan. And this will give you a list of all the Wi-Fi networks that it found. So since I already know my Wi-Fi, uh, I'm just going to add it into the configuration file. So what that is, is uh, under WPA-supplicant. So we will hit sudo nano dash etc dash WPA underscore supplicant dash WPA underscore supplicant dot con f. And that'll go ahead and open the file. So at the bottom of the file, you can go ahead and hit or uh, enter network equal to open bracket tab on the new line SSID equal to and this is the name of your Wi-Fi network. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter that in quotations. And on the next line, you can just hit uh, or enter PSK, which stands for uh, pre-share key and you go ahead and enter your password. This is your Wi-Fi password. So once you have done that, then you can go ahead and hit control X to save and hit Y to confirm, then hit enter to exit the file. And now you have added your Wi-Fi network in the configuration file. So now in the top right of the Raspberry Pi, you can try to connect to your Wi-Fi network. And it should be connecting. So in order to test that, we can go ahead and open up a browser and try and access a website. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just go to Google. And it loaded. That means we are now connected to the Wi-Fi network. 